Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Nigam Samantra. Uh, here is the title of my talk. And this is a theoretical work, which has also uh, been done uh, from the uh, help and suggestion from the following group members of the University of Bristol. So we all know that the annihilation operator is an eigen coherent state is an, uh, is an eigen state of the annihilation operator. So is photon substance an advantage for state of the personal statistics? As we see, it's the cat says no, but we know how it is uh, uh, as we go uh, into the work. Twin beam states, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. So twin beam states has various applications for absorption imaging. Also, also they have been used for the couple, couple interferometer uh, for uh, for for, en uh, for enhancing the phase covariance measurement, which has relevance for holographic noise. So people have studied uh, injecting uh, twin beam state to this coupled interferometer, and uh, they found that it can go below the sub short noise limit. Also, it has been it also it has application in the uh, in the quantum illumination protocol. So the details you, uh, one can find in the following articles. So basically, my point here is to is to show the Poissonian Poissonian twin beam state, and if you uh, and by developing such uh, such strategy can be useful. And it can also have application in the following, in the in these areas. So this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I, I will I will I will talk about sorry. I'll talk about the absorption measurement where I will briefly say standard quantum limit and statistics of the of the radiation field. I'll just I'll also talk about the final factor. I will talk about the differential measurements and uh, there is an another estimator for the absorption measurement recently developed by Paul Antonio Moreu, uh, who is supposed to be here in, uh, in the last days of this conference. And I will show by exploiting the non-classical photon number correlation, how one can uh, go to the subset noise, reach the subset noise limit. Uh, so I have so so in this model we have developed a scheme where where a Poisson and twin beam state can be generated. So so it has been generated in two way. So in the first way we reduce the excess noise of the individual modes, and the secondly we mix the twin beam state with two separated coherent state in suitable proportion <laughs> uh, by by controlling a parameter, and for certain value of parameter. This, these states become Poissonian. And then I will talk about the scheme of photon subtraction to this model. Then we will see the results and conclusion. So this is the schematic of the absorption measurement. And the, here the object is placed directly in the, in the probe beam. And this is the uh, number of photons detected. Up to the up, up, up to the sample. So he, so here this is equivalent to the object and the losses can be modeled using a single beam splitter with transmittance. This one. I I guess here everybody is I mean most of the people for, for those who do the imaging things are quite familiar with this measurement. So I'll shortly revisit this and then. Go to the Poisson and twin beams. Sorry. Yeah. So here, gamma is the absorption coefficient. So what is the uncertainty? If so, in this formalism, what is the uncertainty in measuring gamma? Is given by this expression. As you can see, the f is the final factor, which is represented, quoted in this form. We say that the variance of the probe beam by the mean. So for the classical, for the classical state, the variance equal mean. So f is equal to one. Uh, 
uh, and and it's known that f greater than one represents the thermal statistics and f less than one represents the quantum statistics. So for the classical probe, if we substitute f equal to one, one can read the shortness limit. And for the for the quantum, if we inject the quantum state, then one can read the subshortness limit. This is the differential measurement here. A, sam a sample is placed in one arm and the other arm acts as a reference. So, this, this will be helpful in subtracting the correlated noise. And in this scheme, if we calculate the uncertainty in calculating the absorption coefficient gamma, we take this following form, which has, which has a dependence of both the Fano factor uh, of the probe of the detec uh, uh, detected Fano factor and, and the detected noise reduction factor sigma, which has this form. And you can see if you have two classical beams, it's a, it's a, it gives one because the variance of the, uh, there is no covariance term and the, and the variance to the mean, it gives one for the classical probe. And sigma less than one represents the non-classical correlation. As one can see, if sigma less than one half and f less than one, one can it's, so, it is possible to beat the shortness limit and go to the subshortness scenario. <coughs> uh, in, in last couple of years, there is another interesting estimator developed by Powell and <coughs> here the k, uh, k to be determined to minimize this, minimize the uncertainty of, uh, uncertainty of this estimator and delta e is a correlation factor. Uh, is, is a correction factor to make the estimator on best. Uh, we worked out and we uh, and in the absolute calibration scheme, it turns out that the uncertainty in measuring this uh, this estimator takes this form, which one can see which it is clear that it has a dependence on the noise reduction factor and the final factor of the radiation phase. Now, we will go for the Poisson and twin beam state. Uh, this is this is this is known that if you pump a nonlinear crystal, then at the output, if you if you consider a degenerate case, then the output state is nothing but the two mode squeeze state with this following transformation equation. So Uh, I have calc we have calculated the mean and the variance and uh, and it's important that we keep the both the detect both the detection efficiency in the two arms are the same and the variance takes this form as one can see the variance has both the contribution uh, as a contribution from the Poisson term and the contribution from a thermal term and if and beta for beta is equal to zero then the then the statistics will be Poissonian and if it is equal to 1, it has a mixture of both Poissonian and thermal terms. And this is the expression of the covariance. Uh, surprisingly, the noise reduction factor here comes out to be 1 minus eta. It does not have any dependence on beta. On beta, It is only limited by the det detection loss. <coughs> In this scheme, we the lambda is dip displaced by, by another parameter called alpha by this amount and then and then if we displaced displaced by this amount then th then this more transformation has been generated and this can be uh, this one can see like this is the two more squeeze operator where the lambda is displaced by this amount and then further displacing each mode by alpha, lam alpha lambda square root, this uh, transformation are generated. So, is this, these are the statistics. One, one can see that also in this case, it has a contribution for a Poissonian and contribution for the thermal, but here the covariance term has also a dependence on, on beta. So, 
so 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 the so the compact expression of sigma in this case has a dependence uh, it has a dependence on beta i have not uh, put it explicitly as it is too complicated to put here <coughs> So, here we are symmetrically subtracting photons from each arm of the of the twin beam state, here is the high transmittance beam splitter and when these two APDs have a click, then the state generated is the symmetrical symmetrically photon subtracted twin beam state. which can be also put in another interesting form by taking out by pulling out the two mode squeezing operator and and this and this is a quantum superposition fox state so the 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 idea behind putting such such uh, represent, representing the state in this form is the the transformer equation will remain the same the transformation equation for the for the factorized position and state and the and the correlated position and state will remain the same so this this transformer equation will remain the same where uh, sorry where by injecting a quantum superposition fox states one can generate one two or three uh, m number of photons so as here as a, uh, as depicted for the single photon soft symmetrical single photon subtraction m so k runs from 0 to 1 so it is 0 0 and 1 1 similarly if we want to subtract two photons it will be 0 0 1 1 and 2 2 so if we if we seed this along with a pump beam then the photon subtract states can be generated and this and this type of states are also uh, are experimentally generated uh, in, uh, one can find it in this uh, literature here. So, now uh, here are the results, uh, not the results, but the non classical properties for the for the correlated Poissonian twin beam state. So, this is the final factor, uh, which is nothing but the variance by mean when beta is equal to 1, it has a so, so it has a both contribution of Poisson and non super Poisson and term and one can see here and this uh, red blue and the green represents 0 1 and 2 photon subtraction and here in one can see it has a quantum quantumness for the small number of uh, mean photon uh, mean photon number of mode lambda so it will below 1 as we can see here so in in this case when we change beta to 0 when we consider beta is equal to 0 then then it is then the red one which is unsubtracted state it should be uh, entirely poisonian having final factor 1 and uh, there are further improvement in the statistics by the further photon subtraction but in this case the the mode correlation remain the same which is 1 minus eta In the second case for model 2, for beta is equal to 1, it is the same because it is the uh, it is the it is the it has both contribution from for the Poisson and super Poisson and term. For beta is equal to 0, as we know that since the states are separate now, if now since the states are separate separated Poisson and states, so photon subtraction does not have any advantage. For the for the statistics, so final factor always remain one, regardless of the number of photon subtraction. So, this is for the model two, where the sorry this. This is for the model two, where there are two uh, two uncorrelated Poisson and states. Where I have taken sigma, 
eta the detection loss 0 0.9 and one can see like it is 1 minus eta. So, for beta is equal to 1 it is it is like a contribution from Poisson and, and super Poisson and term. So, it has uh, it, it has 0 0.1 as you can see here and for beta is equal to 0 which are which are uh, uh, uncorrelated um, uncor uncorrelated Poisson and states and one can see everything is classical. So, here there is a intermediate value of beta and one can see there is a advantage of photon subtraction here. There is a there is a animation here. Uh, how, sorry, how how can I click on this? Uh, it's not possible. Uh, Uploaded it into a separate computer. Yeah. Thank you. So, as we see that here the noise reduction factor is below 1. So, everything is non-classical has a non-classical correlation and non-classical correlation increases with the number of photon subtraction. <coughs> so, this is the result for the pulse estimator the uncertainty in the absorption estimation absorption measurement uh, this is the this is the uncertainty and uh, in the x axis you have the absorption coefficient. Uh, the solid lines corresponds to uh, the solid line corresponds to uh, uh, 0 uh, and different colors correspond to different number of photon subtraction and the and the dotted lines corresponds to uh, the classical limit. So, here we, so here I have plotted the ratio of the uncertainty uh, with respect to when we use the classical state. So, it is so it is the uncertainty divided by the divided by the uncertainty when measured with the classical only with the classical probe. So, as it is ratio so if, so if it is less than 1 then then it then it reach the subsurton is scaling. This is the beta is equal to 1 and here it is the beta is equal to 0. and one can see here uh, uh, for the for the correlated uh, for the correlated position and states by changing the beta does not have any significant uh, improvement though uh, though there is an improvement because of the photon subtraction but uh, but you can see in the two plots there is not much difference this is the number difference measurement and uh, this is the same thing and there is not much difference one can see from both of the plots when beta is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 0. So, this is unnormalized uncertainty in the in the in the previous slide this, this was normalized with respect to the classical probe, but this was unnormalized. So, as one can see it is above 1. So, here there is a comparison of the of the pulse estimator uh, this is the pulse estimator which corresponds to this one this color and the number difference corresponds to this color and one uh, uh, and here it's clearly evident that the pulse estimator is better than the than the number difference measurement this is for beta is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 0 and one can see there is not much difference also for the correlated position and twin beam state Uh, now, coming to the model 2, uh, when beta is equal to 1, one can see it uh, it should it should when beta is equal to 1, uh, this would exactly represent the same thing for beta is equal to 1 uh, for this plot for the pulse estimator. Sorry. And this is, and okay. Uh, sorry for the things. So here the thin lines, 
the thin lines here corresponds to beta is equal to 1, the solid lines corresponds to beta is equal to uh, uh, beta is equal to 0 and now this is a transition from, from so, so, so the dotted lines correspond to a transition from, from the uh, beta is equal to 0 to beta is equal to 1. Again for the model 2, so we have made a comparison between the Pulse estimator and the number difference and one can see here the Pulse estimator is always better uh, compared to the number difference measurement. So here for the it is beta is equal to 0 and there is a significant advantage I mean it is so it is much better compared to the Pulse estimator. So here is so this is this is bit different than the than the Poisonian twin beam state. This is usual twin beam state, but the but the scheme that we have developed can be uh, can be incorporated to this scheme. So here there are two. So here is on on symmetric subtraction. Before what we what we were seeing the symmetrical photon subtraction, but here we are just subtracting from the one arm. Okay, so, uh, so here when, when the photon is subtracted and the, when the APT get a click, then what is the statistics here at C1? And we measured, we traced out the 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 two modes, and for each mode we compute the Wigner function, and the Wigner function for the for the C1 mode is this one, and this is for the one photon subtraction, this is for the three photon subtraction, and one can see if we if we change the mean 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 number of photons then it then it goes from the single photon state to, uh, so it has a negativity and it changes from from a from a folk state to a uh, from a uh, folk state to a thermal state and it has also the similar So if we so if we consider so if we put a object as we saw in the in the direct imaging scheme, and we calculate the Wigner function before and after putting the sample, then we, then one can co compute the Fisher information, and by by computing this integral, which is W is the Wigner function, one can have a Fisher information for the absorption measurement. <coughs> so. In conclusion, we model both correlated and uncorrelated Poisson and twin beam state by model parameter in two different scenario. For the first case, we found uh, photon annihilation advantage for correlated Poisson and twin beam state, whereas for the second case, which gives separated Poisson and twin beam, photon subtraction is advantage for the intermediate values of the model parameter. For both the cases, maximum advantage is obtained when the twin beam statistics is thermal. And Powell's estimator is better compared to number difference measurement for absorption measurement. Thanks again. Um, I guess this was all single mode, right? Yeah. Could you ever construct a multi-mode version of the scheme? I haven't, but uh, I'm I'm trying to do that. Okay. So th so this is just a single mode of the radiation. Hey Nagam, thanks for the talk. Could you go back to the um, beginning of where you talked about the differential measurement? Yeah, yeah, there. Um, okay, I see it now. I was I was wondering if you included the noise from the reference beam in your um, variance of your absorption estimator, but I see you have the sigma floating yeah. around there now. Um, Sigma's a half. 
Yeah, oh, yeah I, I didn't see the sigma on the right hand side at the top of the equation at the beginning. Okay, you're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> scheme whereby there is a gated box state, um, which effectively means that every photon in this arm is subtracted or detected to tell us how many are in this arm. So one of your so you are talking slides, about the uh, is sort of related to that, is it? In the, const in the work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this slide here, if you make all of the photons detected by the APD, yeah, it so becomes equivalent to the scheme that uh, Javier has been doing here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was also trying to do this for the homodyning. If we could measure the Wigner function, then through that one can oh, calculate yes. the, the objection estimator. Yes, very interesting. Okay, thank you, Steve, again.